with Ms. Adimikun Adisha Yoju, Team Lead Emerging Services at Data Pro. We'll be talking about the $220 million fine imposed on Meta by the Federal Competition and Consumer Protection Commission, the FCCPC, and other related issues. But before we get into that, can you explain the role of Data Pro in Nigeria's data protection and credit rating environment? Rating environment is that we play in both fields. We are a registered um, Nigerian Data Protection Commission, um, Nigerian Data Protection um, Compliance Organization, and we are also a credit rating agency in Nigeria. So we wear many hats. Um, in our credit in our credit rating space, we are one of the three credit rating agencies, and we are the one of the steps um, in organizations trying to um, get access to funding outside of the traditional, you know, bank loans. So that is access to the capital market, and so they must be able to determine. Um, we must be able to determine how credit worthy they are to be able to get financing from the capital market space. And in data protection, we are a licensed uh, data protection compliance organization, which means we've been licensed to act as an agent of the Nigerian Data Protection Commission. We go out there into the public, uh, we create awareness, uh, we conduct audits for organizations so that they understand um, where um, their operations um, are not aligned with the requirements of Nigerian Data Protection Act and other international best practice when it comes to data protection. So we play in both fields. All right, thank you. You've explained the role of Data Pro. Uh, can, how does Data Pro ensure compliance with the Nigeria Data Protection Re Regulation and other relevant laws? All right, so Data Pro, um, as a company, is also accountable to the laws in Nigeria relating to data protection and privacy. Um, we as a company are audited um, by um, another licensed DPCO to ensure that our own practices are in line with the requirements of the Nigerian Data Protection Act. Uh, we also, as a DPCO I mentioned earlier, um, um, audit other organizations and assist other organizations to comply with the Nigerian Data Protection Act and other international best standards. So that means that we do audits um, to review organizations' um, operations, how they interact with their customers, how they process information and in, and provide recommendations if they are not in alignment with the requirements of the Nigerian Data Protection Act. We review policies, we do trainings, so that employees that work at these organizations that collect a lot of personal information um, understand what you know it means to have access to what is considered the new gold right information um, and are also doing their bit to ensure that the information is kept secure um, and you know they uphold the privacy and not impede on the privacy of their customers all right thank you very much so now talking about the recent $220 million fine imposed on Meta by the FCCPC and NDPC, what are the main takeaways for companies that are operating in Nigeria regarding data protection compliance? So the main takeaways for companies operating in Nigeria um, out of um, the um, $200 million fine um, of Meta by the FCCPC um, in collaboration with some other government agencies like the Nigerian Data Protection Commission. Primarily is that you know, enforcement in data protection is active um, and that, you know, you know, it's not the status quo before, you know, where um, some organizations could get away with having double standards. Now, when I say when I mean that in some most in some multinational organizations, there's sometimes a double standard where, you know, they have, you know, international best standards and, you know, the best um, operations when operating in spaces that have stringent laws, but then have another standard when operating, you know, in Nigeria or countries that they believe maybe have lax, lax laws in that regard. And so um, it's a wake up call to everyone to take data protection seriously. Um, it is also a hint that you know the government takes data protection seriously data the government takes our rights seriously the government takes consumers seriously and so they are out to you know protect us and ensure that our best interest 
you know, uh, um, organizations are acting in our best interest when it comes to the processing of our information. All right, thank you very much. Speaking about the fine, what specific violations led to the fine and how can other companies avoid a similar issue? All right, so when it comes to the fine, it really boils down to consent. Um, consent is one of the bedrocks of data protection. Um, it's one of the primary legal basis is any organization that is collecting or processing personal information acts on. Now, the, 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 the fine is as a result of the belief that, um, or investigation, that uh, Facebook specifically um, shares information with um, its affiliate companies like Meta and other third parties. Um, and this information is gotten from the app Facebook. Now, in other crimes, and what is the standard, um, you as a consumer, you as a customer, you as a user, you should be allowed to opt out. If you believe a processing is, um, is uh, excessive, if you believe it does not act in your best interest, you are supposed to be able to, you are supposed to have that right to opt out of processing that you believe does not serve your best interest. And that option is not given to us in Nigeria, was not given to us based on the privacy policy issued by Meta in um, 2021, which is the privacy policy um, that the fine is also based off of. Um, and so primarily um, at its root, it's that Nigerians don't have the option to opt out of processing if they say they don't want their information shared with other organizations, shared for the benefit of Meta, um, they're not able to opt out and redraw consent that was so easily given Right, consent should also should be easily given and should also be able to be reduced if I believe that um, you know the processing is not in my best interest. And so Meta has failed to do that, and that is why um, they have been fined by the FCCPC in collaboration with other government agencies. All right, thank you. So, how can other companies avoid a similar issue? All right, so. Um, the Nigerian Data Protection Commission, you know, kind of uh, devised a public-private partnership with um, organizations, right? So it licensed several organizations um, to act as DPCOs, which I've mentioned throughout this interview. Um, those organizations are data protection compliance organizations. And so those organizations have been licensed to so to, to basically preach um, the gospel of compliance with data protection um, and compliance with privacy requirements. And so organizations like Data Pro are going around um, to different entities that collect information, that process information to say, hi, this is something that, you know, you should, you know, pay attention to. You collect sensitive information about your customers. What have you put in place to secure it? So by doing that, we do an audit uh, which should be filed with the regulator each year, um, just reviewing their operations to ensure that they are complying with the regulation. And then we provide recommendations, right, um, based on our review. If we notice that, you know, you are not procuring consent appropriately, it is documented, and, you know, we work with you to close out on those gaps. Um, having a data protection or privacy strategy as an organization, developing a policy, and ensuring that your staff are trained on how to actually comply with that policy. Um, in our space, some important concepts are typically privacy by design or privacy by default, ensuring that when you are developing a process or developing a service or a product, that privacy is thought of from the point of the conception of that product or service, and also by default, saying that in the worst case scenario, the customers are thought of, their privacy is upheld, um, and not in peace upon. Um, another point that's important is a data protection impact assessment, which is essentially a risk assessment that should be done by organizations when they are uh, coming up with a new product or service, essentially doing a risk assessment from the point of view of your customers. Based on these operations, based on these data processing activities, I as a company want to you know, go into, have I thought of what are the risks that it may pose to my customers, to my to my consumers, um, and have I put in place to close out on risks or mitigate them? 
All right, thank you. So basically, you've just explained measures that companies should implement if they do not want to disobey data protection laws. So how significant is this fine in the broader context of data protection enforcement in Nigeria? And what precedent does it set for future cases? Nigeria, and what precedent does it set for um, other cases? So this fine, I want to say, is a landmark decision, um, and it will go down in history in our data protection space um, as you know such a landmark decision. Right? There have been other you know fines here and there, but this is the most significant, um, and you know it is um, an eye opener to organisations to ensure that you know, they comply with the requirements of the Nigerian Data Protection Act and uh, several data protection, you know, requirements. Um, it also speaks to the enforcement action of actions of this organize, of this uh, uh, government um, agencies, the FCCPC and the NDPP. They are actively investigating um, cases. They are actively trying to ensure that Nigerians' privacy are upheld um, and um consumer protection rights are at the forefront of their mind um when it comes to um you know the public space protection space and consumer rights protection space as a landmark decision um um setting the tone um about on uh data protection and privacy and the importance in this jurisdiction um and also i'm sure africa is watching right other african countries will also be reviewing to see you know how can they protect you know their consumers their citizens um do they have data protection um uh, uh acts do they have commissions you know the nigerian um, is actually a trailblazer in our during our you know sub region, and so I'm sure Africa, other African countries uh, would also you know be taking um, a hint from you know this whole scenario. Organizations in mitigating risks associated with data protection and ensuring that they remain compliant with local regulations. So as I said um, earlier, how Data Pro helps organizations comply with the Nigerian Data Protection Act and all other related data protection requirements is that you know we act as a compliance solution organization. And so we help our clients first and foremost identify their deficiencies when it comes to data protection and privacy, and also guide them in the implementation of um, you know, the requirement to implementation of control measures to ensure that one, their information um, databases are secure, ensuring that they have the appropriate technical measures to keep the information safe. Because, you know, there are two angles to it. There's the angle of, you know, a regulator fining you for not complying with the requirements of the regulation or the requirements of the law. And there's also an angle of, you know, you being hacked by a bad actor, right? So you have to manage both of them one, by complying with the regulation, two, by also ensuring that your technical measures, you know, are implemented up to date um, and are actively blocking out threats from bad actors uh, when it comes to, um, you know, complying with the acts, ensuring that, you know, you continuously do audits so that you are up to date with the trends in compliance, you have your pop policies publicized, your legal basis for processing is active, you know, if you are procuring consent, it is given freely um, and it's documented. Um, you are training your staff on how to interact with customers, how to manage information. Um, you're conducting a risk assessment when you're uh, developing a new product or service so that you are sure that you have thought of it from your consumer or your, your customer's point of view, um, how their information should be protected and kept secure. All right, thank you. So can we discuss any specific initiatives or tools that Data Pro provides to help these businesses? Okay, so at our core, um, Data Pro, again, is a compliance solutions company. Um, and so we've been, you know, over our 29 years in existence, been providing compliance solutions, helping our clients, you know, understand what data protection is, understand what several other regulatory compliance requirements are. So we have resources on our website. We have 
free trainings on our YouTube page um, that is accessible to the general public. Our website is www.dataprenigeria.net. We have trainings um, available to the general public to understand more on data protection. Um, you know, even at our call, we also value advocacy. So we recently sponsored um, a data protection expo in the University of Illinois, one of the first uh, data protection clubs, you know, in a tertiary institution. Also trying to build the generation of tomorrow to understand the significance in their in that university they are already developing you know technology that will help solve some of our problems in data protection and privacy um you know we have clients that or we have people that reach out to us for resources we're more than happy to help um organizations comply or you know implement certain controls so we are always available. You can look us up online. Have a chat with any member of our team, and you know we are very um, happy to help organizations comply with the Nigerian Data Protection Act. If they have questions, if they have comments, you know we receive them. We receive several questions a day around data protection and respond accordingly. All right. Thank you very much. So looking ahead, what's next for Data Pro? What new services or innovations can we expect from you? So looking ahead for Data Pro, you know, in 2024, anybody talking about technology, anybody talking about anything new is infusing artificial intelligence, right? You said, it. how do you ensure that you are, you know, providing seamless service, seamless solutions to your customers? So we're researching um, and, you know, investigating how to develop certain, uh, certain uh, products one of them is a virtual compliance officer. So we want to be able to develop a tool that helps organizations. Um, so somebody in Sokoto that maybe not, does not have access to an elaborate co uh, compliance team can ask a question around data protection and any other regulatory compliance and you know get response, get guidance. So we're working on a virtual compliance officer as a tool. We're also working on putting AI into consumer um, customer due diligence. So um, a process that several financial institutions have to go through, ensuring that they have done their due diligence before onboarding a customer. So we want to infuse AI into that process and make it seamless. We do have some con um, customer due diligence um, tools currently, but we want to take it a step further and infuse AI to ensure that it's seamless um, and reduces um, maybe human error or false positives in identifying individuals. All right, thank you. We are looking forward to the virtual compliance officer. And thank you, viewers. We just spoke with Ms. Ademiko Adise Oju, the team lead emerging services at Disa Pro. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.